Also, I was going to say, I like this uh, the setting you're in now. I like how you did that whole video in this setting. Like well, because it. it was a long form. I like, know, but I still like it better than you standing up in front of the black backdrop. I don't know. I think it's 50-50. Some of the people uh, are, like wrote in the comments, they're like, I don't like you sitting down. It feels weird with you sitting down. Those are the same people that would get mad if they saw a cashier at a grocery store sitting, even though there's no reason for them to be standing. <laughs> How dare you be comfortable, you fucking piece of shit. Oh, there goes my monetization. I just swore to the f on like the first 10 seconds. All right. <laughs> you going to restart it? Yeah, right. I'm going to hit the restart button. And yellow. Right. And here we are. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another live stream at Angry Streams. My channel, the second channel from the Angry Couch channel. I have my friend, loosely termed definition friend, the fat electrician. Okay. He's below me, okay. as he normally is. He can always below me. And we're here to talk about some shenanigans. We don't know what we're going to talk about today, because every time that I get on and just start talking to Nicholas... He, we always just start popping off about some random shit, and then it, we end up both laughing at it for because because well, we're both like mentally deficient in numerous ways. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, oh Nick, God, your, the guy, your mic's gone. The guy in the chat, Nick. Oh no, it happened again. No, it didn't. <laughs> I can I can I can tell because when I talk. I get a green ring around my frame. I wanted to trick you so bad. Last time no, you had to hit the push and talk. No, it's not happening. <laughs> you there just is quit. a guy in the chat already, all caps. Why are you sitting down? He's here for you. Right? He's one of those assholes that yells at the cashier when they're sitting down at Aldi's. Which, by the way, Aldi's, you made that video, is... the. If I could have stood on my couch and screamed at the television, I would have. Because I do love Aldi's. I absolutely love Aldi's. Okay. You pronounce it wrong the right way, like me. I like it. What do other people call it? Oh, it's a, a lot of people. It's Aldi. It's not Aldi. So, people from the East Coast and people from the Midwest do like, it's called a double possessive. Okay. So, like, Aldi what? is the place. So, you just call it Aldi. But you're referring to the grocery store as being owned by itself. So, it's Aldi's. Correct. And it makes sense to us, but to the rest of the country, it doesn't make sense. And it, they get mad because there's no S. It's just Aldi. I thought the owner was named Aldi. No. So well, it's not, I think... Uh, it's an Aldi's store owned by Aldi. Right. The no, corporation. So it is Other an people, Aldi's. They get mad. They're like, well, you don't call it Targets. Yeah. Anyways, it's a whole thing. Maybe, am I... Yeah, you blew my mind. In my backhand, did you give me a backhanded compliment? Is it supposed to be Aldi's or no? No, it's supposed to be Aldi. So I called so it. Me, so I said it wrong. Yeah, but I also say it wrong, and I'm positive that I should be right, and I'm sticking with it. You're wrong with me, and I'm happy about it. I mean, we're both right, and everybody else is wrong, and we're happy about it. Yes. What about McDonald's? McDonald's is called McDonald's, though. There's a mess in it. Yes. It is McDonald's restaurant, singular. He owns it. I'm going to McDonald's. This doesn't sound right. Because it's it is a McDonald's. Owned by McDonald's. Right. Called McDonald's. Now I'm gonna, now I'm confusing myself. You know, the English language, it's uh it's not as cool as what everybody else thinks. Uh no, it's way cooler. Trying to teach it to people must be hilarious i'm literally googling how do you say aldi <laughs> so how do you say the name of these supermarket chain or brand okay there are going to be two different ways of pronouncing it in english it's certainly It'd be really said funny if this more voice as just aldi okay aldi <laughs> now considering it is originally a this is my this is my copyright strike right here. Is me listening to like a mildly Germanic man try to teach <laughs> us how to say Aldi. At least a German brand 
in Germany it said more as Aldi. Yeah. Aldi. Okay, so a clearer Aldi. A sound ah. rather than an O sound. I know that because I okay. speak a little bit of so German. Aldi, if you want to respect the German original pronunciation, or oh. Aldi for the most common used right. English pronunciations. And now you know. Now we know. Now we know how to pronounce Aldi. Okay. And no, <laughs> Fadar's right. And knowing is half the battle. That should be the title of this. <laughs> How do you say Aldi? <laughs> the fat electrician is live, giving us an English education. Which is actually my sphere of influence. English? Yeah, I was going to be an English teacher. I'm one, sem I'm, I'm one semester short of being an English education major. 7th through 12th grade, high school English teacher. That would be terrifying. Could you imagine me like teaching kids how it to read? Was an English teacher? Oh God, trying to teach the importance of a single comma. Oh, it's not. It's that hard. Like this is this is when you use it. There you go. I know but the options are hilarious. There was a tweet yesterday where somebody said, "Man, titties are awesome," and somebody's like a man, single comma, comma, a single comma. Titties are awesome. <laughs> Changed your whole sexuality. Definitely did. Man, titties are awesome. Man, well, it didn't change his sexuality. It just changed what he was excited about. Or promoting, right? You know, what if he's got a fat friend? What if he's got a fat friend and that's exactly what he wanted people to know? Man, titties are awesome. He's just trying to make his friend a little bit more body positive. And here you are shitting on him and trying to make him some sort of like, you know, weirdo. How dare you? You're not going to turn this around on me. I'm it's sorry. easy. Well, you know what? You could have turned around those man titties, but you didn't. Now those man titties are just man buns and they're up in your face. I've seen you pull this move on too many people. It's not going to work on me. But listen, <laughs> not today. you can't defeat it. It's, it's, yeah, it's, fair. it's a grown up version of I'm going to turn this car around. I turned the car around. I'll start drinking in a little bit, chat. We'll get there. Oh, I've been drinking. I got off the job. And uh, let me tell you something, Nick. I'm going to go to bed early today uh, so I can wake up early in the morning to wake somebody else up early in the morning. And they're going to have a bad day. Good. It's one of those. It's one of those. Yeah. Good. <laughs> it says fat electrician is a B cup. Dude, this is a C cup at least. He well, hey, listen, a B cup. I'm a B cup, damn it. All right, take pride in yourself. Uh truck said pie says fat boys to the bald and the sleeveless. It's not bad. How's your sunburn doing, by hey. the way, after range day? Mine wasn't that bad because halfway through I put a shirt on, so like, it was bad. It wasn't that bad. You dude, you showed um, up the next day and your arms were purple. They looked like this background. Nah, they weren't that bad. Yeah, they were. You I know touched who's them. Was bad was that a uh, uh, da, 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 oh the marine, the marine captain. He dude, was he yeah like he was leaking board. pus out of his forehead and nose. Yeah, his was wild. He made it. He made it pretty. You know, I tell you what, taking um lemons and making lemonade he made a post about it. it was like uh am i supposed to write myself a negative counseling statement because i didn't take care of government property because of the bad sunburn that i have kagan dunlap i blanked out his name for a second but yeah. kagan dunlap yes chat i own a shirt thank you uh tank top is a shirt sleeveless doesn't mean yeah. it's shirtless all right second american second amendment shirt that's right. Right to bare arms. Drunk. What's your favorite? I have questions for you, though. What's your favorite daily carry pistol? None of your business. That's what it is. You know what I'm tired of people asking? What the fuck I carry? None of your goddamn business. You know what it is? It's a pistol, and it works. That's it. Don't worry about it. Maybe it's a Glock. Maybe it's a Sig. Maybe it's a Taurus. Maybe it's a 1911 because I'm a gosh dang old FUD, and I don't like the fact that I can't see my hammer go backwards. What it, who gives a shit? I've seen it. Angry cops get so defensive because it's a 38. I used to carry a 380 all the time, by the way. I loved a 380. Until I started shooting it. Like, I bought it, and I was like, all right, it's a point-and-shoot weapon. I'm good to go. I'll even say it was a Smith & Wesson shield. Garbage. It is a garbage handgun. It is the most trash handgun. I was... Here's, this, here's a real story. Here's how I knew it was trash, right? My friend and I were driving on his private property to like 
drive and shoot at targets through the window because we thought it was fun. And it most certainly was. And I'm popping it out the window, like pop, pop, pop at the target as we're driving by like 15 miles an hour. Sideways or right? Don't worry about how I shoot. Don't ask me any questions. No, you here. were holding your hand sideways. I was like, like I was do I was it was combat effective. That's all that matters. Okay. And that thing jammed and it sucked. And I was like, you know what I need to do? I need to take this and be a little bit more serious with it. Let me go take it to a range and really like hone this thing in. Because I bought it and used it for like several months without a, like I fired it like a couple of times to make sure that it worked, cleaned it, fired it, and then I was like, okay, cool. But I didn't like go, how far can I go back with this? How accurate is this, right? I didn't take my time with it. And so after like six months, eight months of using it as a, an everyday carry, I like stood back at like 10 feet and I'm trying to shoot it and it was absolute garbage. Absolute garbage. And now, now honestly, it's like my fanny pack gun. That's it. If I can't carry anything else, I'll carry that. And I know I basically have to like, um, what's what's it called? Uh, what was that movie that Quentin Tarantino did? Inglorious Bastards. I feel like Inglorious Bastards, you and run up and like glove punch you in the chest and pull the trigger and hope it doesn't jam. And that's it. I need to use like 380p for this thing to work and not jam. It's so garbage. Good. Yeah, I'm, I'm re I was really disappointed with the uh, Smith & Wesson 380 shield. Really disappointed. Shield or bodyguard? I forget which. Poop. Poop. Poop coming Guns out of your mouth, Ron Burgundy. So better in the last like five years. What's that? Guns have gotten so much better in the last like five years. I would, yeah. It's, it's funny that you say five years because I think you're absolutely right. Like 2019, oh. 2018, all of a sudden, all the guns started awesome. getting really well. Taurus was yeah. one of them. I want to say, like, there was a couple 1911 Tauruses that were really good. Really good. My buddy owned a couple of them, and I was like, this is a fantastic firearm. And people used to shit on Taurus all the time. They're starting to shit on them a little bit now, but I got no hate. Yeah, Big Gippin, I got a fanny pack. Hulk Hogan has a fanny pack. You worried about that shit? Come at me, bro. Draw it faster than you can with your, you know, your fucking front gut hanging over your appendix carry. Can't even get at it because your gunt is flopped over. 380p means uh, 380 penetrating. And then P plus means penetrating plus. So it's got more, a little watched. bit more powder. What are all those papers you got there? Are you doing your taxes? I have questions. No, I've been you have questions? For a video. I, I need the opinion of a drill sergeant with experience. I don't even know why I have this. Our, our the way that we are, the way that we are right now is I have like half of the screen is me talking to you, and the other half the is, other half is how, the video of Aldi. Yes, it, you're a hundred percent right. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna make it fat electrician. No, oh, don't do that. Make it the fat electrician YouTube. Ugh. Oh, you're right. 919,000 followers. You should subscribe. Everybody should subscribe. If you haven't Absolutely. subscribed to the fat electrician, who even are you? Do you like history? Do you like common sense? Good. Oh, War Daddy's right. right there. War Daddy's at the top. It's a good one. It's a very good one. All right. You ready for some drill sergeant questions? Oh, Jesus. No, they're not that bad. They're serious. All right. I mean, you say that. Give me give me a drill uh, sergeant question. Generally speaking, mm -hmm. when like for recruits, in particular for this video, men, would you say that older men like 20, like closer to 30 perform better or worse than like 18 to 20 year olds at basic training? All right, so it's it's hard to say. So okay. I get more, the majority of people are below the age of 24. So I'm dealing with 90% people under the age of 24 and maybe, maybe 10% over the age of 24. So if you're older, you're a smaller, a far smaller percentage, but you come into basic training being like, all right, I was a truck driver for a while and that shit sucked and this is my last opportunity to do well. 
and they do well. Or you're a dad and somebody motivated you and you want to join your son or you used to be in and you were an active component or you're reserve and you got out after like, you know, your first four year contract and now you're like 35 and you're like, oh, I got to go through basic training again, Hold but on. I'm going to do it. Pause. pause, pause, pause. Thank you, chat. How come you aren't subscribed, asshole? What? <laughs> first of all, <laughs> if you'll notice in the top right corner, that is not the Angry Cops logo. That is is the Angry Streams logo. I'm almost positive that's your face. It's my face, yeah, but it's a different account. The Angry Cops YouTube account, which I use to watch shit and follow things. I thought we were friends, Rich. How many accounts do you want me to follow? How many accounts do you follow me on? Huh? Bro, do, do, you got two accounts. Do you follow oh. me on both of your accounts, Nicholas? All three of them. Bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. I don't believe you for a fucking second. You're a liar trying to make me look stupid on my own channel. All right. Once you go get severed again, so your fucking tattoos can peel off. You smart ass. Well, I got some questions to ask you, Richard. I got some questions to ask you, Nicholas. The balls. Where do you get them from? Where do you get the balls to come over here and such spew such nonsense to me? You asshole. You know what? You're such a fucking shit starter. You do this to me. You are so good at fucking turning me off. You just, you know what? To fucking flip a switch on me like an ex-wife. You're such a bitch, dude. You're such a fucking turd. Look at your shit fucking eating grin right now. Giggling. You muted yourself. I can't even hear you breathe. It's probably heavy and wheezing, just like your wife hears at nighttime because you don't use your sleep apnea mask. It's my fucking streaming account, not my normal account, you chode. You want me to switch over? Yeah, I'll switch over. I'll switch over. Oh, I'll show fine. you. Just... I'll show you. No, you shut the fuck up. I'll show you. <laughs> You know, getting roasted by you was a lot funner when I when I knew that we were friends. Never were. I don't even know what you're talking about. I had too much time. You got, I got no time for friends. Oh, don't show that. Oh, good. Sorry, anyways, back to 25-year-old. Shut up. I'll show whatever I want to show. I don't give a shit. I'm not afraid. People know what I do. I'm see-through. Hold on. My, my fucking own voice is pissing me off right now. It's going to be super funny when you're not subbed on this account either. Oh! What do you know? What do you know? Whoa, what is it? What is, it seems as though there's a gray box there because it says subscribe, doesn't it? You showed. You jizz. Look at you. Look at you and your stupid face. I'm coming through. You know what? You're not coming through shit. You couldn't come through a wet paper bag. I don't even know how the hell you had that many kids. I know how that many kids you had because you're too stupid to use protection. That's what it is. That's right. Jism. Subscribed. Don't you ever talk to me in that tone again. You lost your mind. What were we I talking about before you, you completely like derailed this entire conversation? I think we were talking about how the bell isn't turned on for notifications. Yeah, no, no, no. I hear enough of your shit. I don't need you. I don't need to notify. I don't need you to notify me when you fucking come on the internet. All right, I'm good. I get enough of you in real life. I don't need to know when your internet's on. I love getting you going. It's my new favorite pastime. Dude, you, you know how to do it, man. You know how to poke my freaking buttons. You're stupid at your dumbness. Oh, Rich, what you, oh, you know what I noticed, Richard? You know what I noticed? After you having me on your channel, trying to be a good buddy, helping, you know, doing some things together, beep, beep, beep. you aren't you subscribed? Why aren't you bleep, bleep, bleep? Why don't you go get a drink? Why don't you go get some freaking alcohol in your system and relax a little bit? Why don't you put a All lip right. or a chew in? You just morbidly obese American from the Midwest is going to tell me how to live my life. Must have lost your mind. I'll tell him that when he comes back here. Don't think that I talk shit about him on his back. I talk shit right to his face. Don't let him know that I like him. He's very nice. Oh, he's back. Good. Good, good, good. The couple uh, people anyways, are very are very happy that I just gave you uh, a good load of shit. Oh, happy Dingus Day. That's right. right. My beautiful Polacks. Huh? Dingus Day. You know what Dingus Day is? No, 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 you don't do that with a dingus day. 
Are you unaware of what Dingus Day is? No. You don't know what Dingus Day is? Mm -mm. It is the largest Polish celebration. <laughs> okay. It's basically the beginning of spring. It celebrates the beginning of spring. And courting, because spring and summertime is, are the beginning of courting seasons, because young men and women can go out and see each other and start dating. And in the Polish community, young women who enjoyed or thought that young boys were cute, well, they would get a pussy willow, and they would smack the cute boy that they liked with a pussy willow. Shut up. I know. I know. It's got the first word is a little, you know. And then young men who thought that a young girl was cute would either like throw like a little bucket of water on them, but now we use squirt guns. So it's like a little squirt gun of water so they're not getting like drenched with a bucket of water. But yeah, that's it. Um, who's the weird white gay man on CNN? Anderson Cooper. Anderson Cooper. Uh, so Buffalo has the largest dingus day. Is that not an appropriate description of the man, the gay reporter? white fella on CNN? No. I just, he I identifies as all of those things. I Except understand. he doesn't, he doesn't anticipate, he doesn't get like any of the white guilt though, which is kind of fucked up, right? Sometimes he pushes watching it. you, sometimes watching you monologue is like watching somebody set up their own alley-oop. Because <laughs> nobody can keep up with me. And that's why I have to set myself up. That's fair. <laughs> sometimes I set myself up for failure. Uh... <laughs> But anyway, white milk toast uh, Anderson Cooper, uh, the CNN gay, he <laughs> he he uh, made fun of Buffalo. Like he was like, "Oh, the biggest Dingus Day celebration is in Buffalo, New York," and he like shit on us for having like a party and a reason to get drunk and have a parade. And so everybody like now in Buffalo, for the most part, those that still remember like dislike him very much, and he, he's just a jism. So. We don't like Anderson Cooper in Buffalo. And uh, we throw a hell of a party for the Polacks because, you know, people need to celebrate the people that are the dumbest people in the world. You know, because without Polacks, who would have marched into Poland backwards thinking that they were leaving? We know those people. Those people are the kind of people that Brandon Herrera talks about on his YouTube channel. How dare he? That's, I cannot wait for him to win. It's going to be hilarious. His his opponent, Tony Gonzalez, it's his attack and smear articles. Let's talk about that. You're so the worst. for anybody that doesn't know, Brandon Herrera, the AK, uh, AK Jesus, the AK guy, is running for Congress. He's running for a seat in Congress. And it's like the 53rd district. 23rd. 23rd? Yeah. Either way, it's the it's the southwestern portion of Texas, which which carries two-thirds of the Texas border with Mexico, right? And there's his opponent is the incumbent, the current congressman, Tony Gonzalez. And Tony Gonzalez obviously wants to keep his seat and thinks that he's doing a good job. So him and Brandon Herrera are arguing about things on the internet, on Twitter. And you'd be like, oh, is it like policy? Is it, you know, uh, immigration? Is it, you know, taxes? Is it the Second Amendment? No. The 99% of it, is Tony Gonzalez and his Twitter team and weird inbred group of promotion people trying to shit on Brandon Herrera and taking everything he says way out of context, blowing everything that he has done or said and smearing it into such an obscene, like, in, in, in such an obscene way that you, you can't even recognize it. And it's just everybody on the internet, including Brandon, like, just replying to him in the comments being like that's not even close to what i said and a fantastic uh description of this to kind of show everybody how fucked up you know what i'm gonna go i'm gonna go on twitter i'm gonna go on twitter right now oh let's go well and then the other thing is like he gets community noted on every single post he makes every post he and makes he gets corrected. like did you see he got community noted so many times in a row that the Texas current sitting ag commissioner tweeted out that representative Tony Gonzalez has been corrected by community notes 12 times this week. The, How can we trust a politician that lies this much? The Texas attorney general, the highest law enforcement official in Texas, correct? Uh, no, this is uh, sorry. I, 
I might have said that. It's uh, the ag commissioner. Sorry. What's an ag commissioner? Uh, like the dude in charge, like basically the dude that all of the farmers and ranchers in the state look to to be Agriculture. like, hey, you said ag. I vote? thought you meant ag. Oh My bad. no no no. Let's look for Tony Gonzalez. Team Tony. Okay, let's see. One of them is really good. Oh, Team okay, Tony. so here's here's yeah, one. one. This is one, yeah. So oh, there's a new one? Team Tony reposted a young lady. And now, like, Team Tony will, will post its own bullshit, right? They'll make their own posts. But this is how bad it is, right? They're reposting this, this lady, Anna Giaritelli. It says, Republican congressional candidate Brandon Herrera posted videos featuring Nazi imagery, songs, and jokes. Herrera is challenging Tony Gonzalez, Republican in Texas, in a main runoff. Um, so this, if you look at this, you're like, oh man, why is this guy promoting Nazi stuff? He, he posted videos featuring Nazi imagery that makes him sound like an, no, he was, he was firing World War II weapons and was educating people on how these World War II weapons worked who use them, what they compared to, to allied weapons. It's literally an educational video on World War II weaponry. And they're like, he promoted Nazism. It's like, well, how was he going to show the weapon? How was he going to show so a firearm that Nazis used if you don't? So does every history book in the History Channel when they talk about World War II. Yeah, what's, what's Anna going to do now? Is she going to fucking shove a dildo up her ass every time that National Geographic shows a Panzer tank or like a U.S. tank? Let me ask you this, Anna, you fat bitch, you double-chinned retard. Like, what are you going to do the next time that, I don't know, Indiana Jones comes on? And there's, oh, oh, he's fighting Nazis. Does that mean Harrison Ford is now acting with people in, you know, Nazi uniforms using Nazi imagery, songs, and jokes? Oh, no, Anna. Anna wouldn't have lasted in the camps. She wouldn't have lasted. I get mad going on Twitter now. Oh, you can't. No, you got to ignore Twitter, man. You go on Twitter to tell people what you're doing, to shit post on dumb people like Anna and Tony, and then you leave. You, you leave. That's it. It's it's uh, it's like a dine and dash, but instead of like stealing money from, you know, your server because you didn't pay for a meal, it's kind of like leaving 50 cents and then, you know, taking a poop and leaving. You like you run into a McDonald's at a truck stop, take a shit, and then you leave. Nothing you did was wrong, um, but it didn't really cost you anything. It feels dirty. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's also just like a natural part of the human experience. You have to poop. Yeah. This video is definitely getting demonetized, by the way. I mean, I'm just I don't think so. I think we're pretty good. I don't, <laughs> dude. This is my live stream channel. It doesn't have enough followers to get demonetized. Nobody's watching this shit. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, the ads restricted. Whatever. There's no ads. There's just it's just a bunch of turds. Just a bunch of weirdos just hanging out in the chat watching. Was it? Uh, will you two get back on Axe formerly Twitter? We need your humor, dude. We're on it, man. We're talking shit to everybody. Uh, Jack, it's, hey, it's a new. It's that new deputy again. What are your thoughts on law enforcement using 40 count Glocks? Also, I scored a perfect score on EVOC. How do you score a perfect score on EVOC? You drive a car and you don't crash into shit. That's just called good driving. For, how, what Law enforcement still using 40 cal? There's nothing wrong with using 40 cal. I like 9 mil because you can carry more of it. And a 9 mil hollow point is great. There's nothing wrong with 40 cal. There's, I hate it when people are like, pick, it, pick an ammunition. 9 mil. I'll pick 9 mil forever because it's lighter and I can get more of it. But there's nothing wrong with a 40 cal. There's nothing wrong with 45. A 45 hollow point. No, bitch. These are guns. We have to agree 100% or I think you're dumb. Oh, no. I forgot. <laughs> it's like picking an ice cream flavor. What's your favorite ice cream flavor? Are you going to eat vanilla your entire life? You can't add any sprinkles to it. Otherwise, you're gay. No, man. I want an optic on my Beretta. That, like, I don't give a shit if it doesn't make sense to you. I just want it because it makes me feel good. It's like a kink. You can't. Be mad at somebody for being into Asians with tiny feet because that's just what they're into. They like Asians with tiny feet and they want to push their feet together and lube them up 
and then, you know, do the thing with the feet. I don't do that with the feet, but if somebody wants to do that with the feet, they can do that with the feet. I can look at that and go, okay, those feet aren't for me, but you can enjoy those feet. And that's the same way people need to look at ammunition. Is that a Bud Light, Dylan Mulvaney? No, it's a Guinness. Oh. You know, I, I visited the Guinness Distillery in Ireland, and it was fantastic. I believe you. It was, it was actually a very, it was Make educational, it entertaining, and we got to drink. And they had specialty uh, Guinness glasses that are only I made there at the Bud Dublin Light. Distillery. Hmm? How did you mistake that for a Bud Light? Bud Light's blue. Oh, I, I thought I saw Bud Light on the labeling really quickly. It was just a shimmer and a shine, and I couldn't see what it was. And I thought I saw a B and a, and a light. I like yeah. white lettering. I don't know. I can't see. Anyways, for real, though, I need your opinion on these old motherfuckers in basic oh, training. Yeah, so old cats. All right, so here's my thing. Um, if you give me an old dude, he's more responsible. Oh, jeez. You know... Let me ask, okay, let me make it easier. It's if, really hard because they both don't know shit. It, it's like, hey, do you want your younger brother to do good or do you want your older brother to do good? Okay, it's let me, it's, let me it's kind of, it's eh. If, if you had a competition with another drill instructor and you had, and the end of the competition was to do a full scale, um, like field operation, mock, like team against team, blanks, miles gear, the whole nine yards. Old person. You'd pick, and you you could pick a platoon of twenty seven plus year olds or a platoon of seventeen to twenty one year olds, and you got first pick. Which platoon would you pick? I take. I pick the older guys. Okay. Yeah. If it was. Yeah. If, if you're like, hey, you need to challenge this group and see who's better. Old guys. Okay. That's what I thought. Yeah. And I have the stats to back it up because we did this in World War Two. How so? What do you mean? Uh, in World War II, we stood up three new divisions right out of the gate. This is my next video, but it's fine. I won't I won't give too much away. Uh, there was a unit. I'm not going to say which one. It was an entire division. I'm not shitting you. The average age, the average rich was 33 years old. That means that there's probably like 10 years younger and older. There was a 53-year-old World War I veteran coming in as f fresh going through basic all over again because the guns and everything had changed dude people don't realize that world war one and world war two were hitler was in world war one and then became yeah. the fuhrer the in world yeah. war two so like what, was, what did world war one at 1915 uh 1917 i think 19 1919 i'm horrible with dates me too. I'm bad with them. I can give November you a good like estimate, but I'm never good with exacts. Yeah, 1918. 1918. Okay. So it ends in 1918, and then World War II ends in like what? 1945. Yeah. So let's say 1940 is like really like in the midst of it, like where your people are getting fucked up, and Germany's like already gone into a couple, you know, countries. So like 27 years or 22 years. That's dude. That's like you, dude. You know what? Oh, you know what? I hear something fucked up. That's me right now. That's me right now. I've got. I've got. It'll be twenty years soon. In a couple months, it'll be twenty years. I'll be in. And all these fucking kids. I used to train soldiers twelve years ago. I used to train civilians into soldiers, with the expectation you will not might you will be deployed and go overseas. You will see combat. There is no if and or but. It was 2013, 2012. You will go and see combat. Now I'm going in and drill sergeants don't have combat patches. The kids that I trained are now drill sergeants from 12 years ago, right? Wild. And <laughs> some of them are drill sergeants that have only got five years on, which is normal, which is normal. When I was, you know, the other thing too was I forget if we were, I think, I forget if it was, I think we were at the table. We were talking. And I was like, wait, when did you deploy? When did you deploy? When did you deploy? And I was like, holy shit. 
everybody deployed after me. My first deployment is the first deployment in like our, our friend group. 2005 or six, 2006. When did Eli deploy? Seven. He came in after oh, the surge. Okay. He came he in during the surge. Deployed. That was there before, during, and after the surge. Hmm. So like, unless you like, like in the group, I've got the earliest deployments. Unless you count like Tim Kennedy, who's I'm, I think is, I'm almost certain has been in as long as I have. And being a Green Beret, he de he deploys immediately. But he also has like, you know, like four and six month tours because they're super cool. Yeah. Nothing's wrong with truckers, senpai. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, no. Uh, Can you imagine that your average? You, that's like a drill sergeant unit. Real talk. That's like a that's like a reserve drill sergeant unit. The median age is like thirty, because it's guys that are young that wanted you know a little bit of experience, and like guys that are old that realize how good a reserve drill sergeant unit is, and how consistent it is. It's that, that's got to be like the median average in our unit is probably like 28, 32, 30. Yeah, I mean, this this whole unit, average age, 33. How many people were in the they, unit? Was it a battalion-sized element? Bro, it was you. a whole combat team. It was a fucking division. Dude, a division? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was their call sign? The, like, the third division. Old balls. Old balls, the sir. Old, old balls. The old bastards. Yes, it was. On the nose, dude. On the nose. Be they proud of it. They got it given to them by the Marines because the Marines were watching them take a fucking island. And the, one of the Marine units on the next island over with a fucking binocular is like, look at those old bastards go. And they're just <laughs> kicking the shit out of the Japanese. Dude, what? Uh, what there's like that, that, that phrase that uh, people have like bastardized and put on like motivational t-shirts. It's like fear an old man in a young man's oh, yeah. like thing yeah, or whatever or whatever yeah. yeah fear an old man fear in a young man's man butthole or whatever where, men, where men die young or whatever yeah yeah listen, listen to these fucking stats dude so um the for the pacific theater in world war ii okay fifty thousand japanese prisoners of war were taken the average ratio was 44 dead for one POW. That's the average across all the US forces. Okay, for every 44 enemies KAA, we took one POW. This particular division, I'm not gonna say which one, division, the whole division took 358 POWs and had a 122 to one ratio. During Okinawa, was this, a, was this an army unit? Yeah. <laughs> People forget the army was in the Pacific and fucked the world up too. They're all like, Bro. "Oh, the Marines! They suffered all these casualties. And this, oh, they were so hard charging." The army was there in too. Oka in Okinawa, they took fifty-eight POWs at a two hundred and seventy-eight to one ratio. And. Hey, no, hold on. Here's here's the part. The U.S. military average, with these numbers included, the average was ten to one kills to POWs taken. This division's totals were two hundred and seventy-eight to one. <laughs> Old age yeah, and treachery, man. Around. Old age uh, and treachery. There's a thing. It's like a, it's like youthful something or other versus old age and treachery will win against. Youthful exuberance is no match for old age and treachery. And treachery. There it is. Yeah. You're like the yin to my yang. Like, I know half of a sentence, and you know the whole sentence. I'm grandpa asking you to fix the VCR, and the second that you get it to start working, I grab the remote from you and go, I know how to work this now. I got this. Yeah. yeah. So, this should be a fun video. It's going to be those stats alone. Interesting. Oh, horrifying. It's terrifying. Well, the other thing is, like, they stood this division up in 1942. Like, they're just, like, 
you're like you're not thinking about it now but like think of about what an undertaking it would be to start a whole fucking division from scratch and you have to deploy in a year and a half how insane is that as far as like if you join an army unit now like you go to the 82nd airborne and you get to come into like this culture and like oh the the guys before me jumped out of planes this year and they did this and they did that and here's our standard operating procedures that have been worked on and modified and handed down for 150 years then they're just like here fucking figure it out have at it do whatever out of the gate you deploy in 18 months have fun like that's fucking crazy. But that's the cool thing. You get a whole bunch of old men that have owned businesses and have like been doing shit for the past 20 years of peace. And they're like, ah, we know how to do this. Like, hey, you know what? That's kind of fucked up, sir. We're going to do it this way. Make sure that it works. That, those are going to be the best hard charging NCOs ever. Like, could you imagine like your all your NCOs are 30 something and you're like 20. You're like, ooh, these guys, these guys own a business back at home. Like, this guy owns the mini mart that I work at. I He already... I'm going to listen to him. He seems about right. Fucking crazy. Oh, somebody asked you a question. Um, Nick, I have a Hot Wheels size Toyota Hilux technical with a ZU23 2AA platform. Interested. What is it? I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means either. What's a ZU23-2AA platform it's a hot wheels hunter it's a hot wheels did you decide to pay five dollars in the super chat to ask a grown-ass man if he like if he's interested in your hot wheels car did the people that watch this page eat glue god damn it rich i might want this hot wheel calm down i'm googling it it could be a rare hot wheel it you could, don't it, know Rich ass, 36-year-old considering joining the National Guard. Any advice? Yeah, do it, old balls. Do it. Sorry, 36? You're not eligible. Yeah, he is. In the National Guard, isn't he is. The, isn't the cutoff 32? No, it's like 35. You can get a, you can do a waiver up to 40. Okay. Still less than 36. <laughs> well, 40 is less than 36. Or 36 is less than 40. Words are hard. God, you're fucking, you're on it tonight. I, you, hey, listen, don't turn me on again. <laughs> don't flip that switch. You get another 10 minutes of fucking... Me up your butt. Everything I say is gay today. I like it though. It's the mustache. <laughs> High's eyes say stop, Nick. <laughs> High's eyes say don't stop. Double wide surprise. Oh, I was gonna tell you, I really enjoy your wallpaper on your uh, Twitter profile of you. On I changed stage it at the live show. Oh, it's fantastic. It was it was such a good uh, photo. I thought that it was, and it had everybody in the background. I thought it was a really good, a really good Twitter background. It was a good picture. Plus, it's got my thick thighs in there. Just gotta show skies out, thighs out. The Marines appreciate the Army's gift of the M1 Grand in in the Pacific. I fucking bet. Okay. What? Okay. Do you, do you not understand how big of a deal the M1 Grand is? Is that is that what's going on here? Wait, did you say that the Army appreciates the Marines gift of the M1 Grand? I thought the... No, the Marines appreciate the Army's gift of the M1 Grand in the Pacific. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, that... I, I thought you I thought you reversed it. Like the oh, Army... Maybe I did. I'm dumb, sorry. No, we could both be stupid. It happens. You could be right and I could be wrong. Nobody would know. Also true. There's no way of checking this. We can't rewind time. The chat, 40 is less than 36, Rich High. <laughs> in spirit? In spirit? 36-year-olds give up way more than 40-year-olds. 40-year-olds got something to prove. They turned 40. 36-year-olds are just like, I can skate on my 30 privilege. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. 40-year-olds are out there grinding, stealing 36-year-olds' bitches, getting on TRT. Oh, good. Why do you think people like a dad bod? A hmm? couple of years from now, it's going to be granddad bod. Everybody's going to like that saggy nipple skin. 
What are some red and green flags to look for when trying to find a firearm slash safety training class? How clean is the building? If it's really dirty and shit's falling in on itself, it's going to be a bad class. If it's overly clean and super motivated, it's going to be a bad class in the opposite reason. So the dirty, dirty, dirty place is going to have an idiot that doesn't know what he's talking about. It's doing it for money. And the uber clean place with like motivational posters on the wall has probably done like a combat tour as a cook and is trying to like, you know, like buy his way of being influential in your world. So find a nice medium, a hunting uh, or shooting club. Those places are usually respectable because those guys are normie dudes that are out on the range that won't bullshit you. Um, somebody asked, imagine if a police department was forced to use a Colibris or Liberator pistol. What's a Colibris? I don't, uh, I don't know what a Calibra says, but a Liberator is like the... The single shot the, that we dropped in France. Yeah, the, yeah. So I'm guessing it's something along those lines. Imagine if the police were poorly armed as opposed to the bad guy. So Europe. Imagine if I was a European cop. No, thank you. Oh, God, I looked into that the other day. That's fascinating. What's that? How the how the British do that. Um. So, it, it, okay, it all started because there's this new uh, video of a dude that's he's having some type of mental episode or he's just really dumb he pulled a katana on the cops and like yelled some anime shit and yelled at the cops with the katana like and the cops shot him and killed him because he was running at him with a fucking katana huh and all these people on the internet are like wow the cops should have de-escalated and it's like i i don't i like these people could literally get mad at gravity because somebody jumped off a building. Like I don't, you put a guy, there's, there was no, why did the sidewalk have to hit him so hard? So then all these people were like, well, why couldn't they use like a net gun or something? And then somebody brought up uh, this video of this British police officer, like literally doing hand to hand combat against somebody that had a machete and like fucking throwing them. And they're like, why can't our cops do this? And I was like, all right, I'm going to look into this. And I was actually, it's actually kind of cool because Britain is so much smaller than the U.S. So their cops are like not very well armed. Mm -hmm. So whenever a situation like dude with a machete happens, the cops just kind of like hang out and basically like keep innocent people away from that guy mm -hmm. and also stay away from that guy. And then they call up and they have like, specialized forces of basically our version of SWAT, but they're just fucking badasses that they call in and they haul ass and get there and actually handle the situation and do it, do shit. So like, that's how they do everything. Like I'd love to see a city street cop, much like myself and the people that I work with, uh, go toe to toe in a situation and, and, and like juxtapose us, a uh, daily carry, everyday carry police officer from the United States to the SWAT guys in a situation. Because I feel like if there's some dude that's all up high in his own piss with a katana and there's a Buffalo cop from New York sitting there with his gun drawn being like... SWAT guy shooting him way faster. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. I feel like the British guy's going to fucking pop him right away. I feel like the, the, the New York cop, my guys are going to be like, listen, dude, put it down. Don't let me tell you something that happened the other day. This is on the news. This isn't anything new. This isn't anything new. It's unfortunate, but it's not anything new. There was a man called 911. If I'm not mistaken, he called 911 on himself. No, 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 no. There was neighbors called neighbors called. There's a guy outside in the middle of the uh, street. He's got a shotgun. He's very upset, screaming, right? Please show up, right? Buffalo, please show up. It's a gun call. Crazy man, middle of the street, shotgun. Red flags. That's that's a red flag. You should be aware that deadly fourth force is like eminent right here, right? Crazy man in the middle of the road, screaming with a shotgun. What do these cops do? They get behind their car. They got cover. They got their guns drawn, and they they're talking to the dude. Hey man, put the gun down. Hey, settle down, bud. Don't do that. Hey, listen, put it down. We don't we don't give a shit. You're not in trouble, man. 
You're not going to go to jail. You're going to go to a fucking the hospital and get checked out because you're having a mental thing. Boom! Fires off around. Does anybody shoot him? In the sky. Nope. Fires off around in the sky. Nobody shoots him. They're like, yo, dude, are you fucking stupid? Don't do that. Now he points the gun at the cops. Right? Unfortunately, he did not make it. Let's put a European SWAT guy in there. SWAT. Fucking suck my dick. Right? We'll put a SWAT guy in there. What's he going to do? The second that they... He's, sir, put the, mission, put the weapon down, sir. Put the weapon... We put, so, That's it. They're going to pull up. They're going to see him with a gun. They're going to shit their pants. Fill it with fucking whatever they eat. And it, like beans and toast. The most garbage thing I've ever heard in my life. And then, and then they're going to fucking light him up. Like, okay. No offense, no offense to my European police officer brothers and sisters in arms. Like, like, cool, but like, you just don't, I don't know, that ain't your jam. I feel like de-escalation, I feel like their de-escalation is, is not de-escalation. Their de-escalation is, hello, sir, all right, hey, you seem to be very upset because you not keep punching me in the face. All right, yeah, that hurts a lot. All right, please stop punching me in the face. I'm gonna wait until thirty other people get here, and then I'm uh, then when then you'll stop punching me in the face. Ah, there's three other people here, sir. And then they arrest him, and then and, and hope that a taser works. Good. I think I've accidentally just called all European cops like turds. Yeah, I well, I was more fascinated with the fact that you were somehow French, Scottish. British and Australian in the span of like 45 seconds. Yeah, I noticed that I was Australian at the end as well. <laughs> Good. <clears throat> oh, shit. Oh, somebody just said that the Calibri was a tiny pistol made by the Austrians in 1914, made for women to carry as a concealed carry weapon. It would have been better for making the bad guy die of laughing. So, like, a. Why was it made for women to conceal? Was it like pressed I mean, to fit the between thing. their busts? Like little tiny purse guns they sell now. Like a Derringer? Yeah, that type of shit. Eh. I mean, it's I don't sad. know why you carry a Derringer if you can't just carry like a small six shooter. Like you could just get like a 22 Hornet. Chat wants me to tell you that the M1 Grand was made by a guy from Quebec. Which is true, but he made it when he lived in America with American citizenship. So he was fucking American, chat. Which is almost Thank like you. Brandon Herrera moving to Texas because he knew it was a better state for freedom. And that's why Did he's you know running for Brandon, Congress. And why people in the 23rd Brandon, District of Texas, that western southern border, uh, two-thirds of all of Texas, that two-third border of Texas, should vote for Brandon Herrera. And not for Tony Gonzalez with his extremely, extremely smooth forehead. It doesn't make sense how shiny it is. Brain. I'm not saying he's and an brain. alien. But he could be. Nobody said that he's not. Go, go, go to the one where he tried to smack talk Brandon for saying, uh, Brandon Herrera thinks that Texas was founded by people from the East Coast. Real Texans know that Texas was founded by Texans. It's the dumbest fucking thing anybody's ever said. Hold on, I've got a pretty good one. I've got him with Nerd Roddick and the three-second clip that they cut out of Dude. context. Because oh, it's okay, great because then. like the, the first thing underneath it is, is somebody adding literally just 10 more seconds to it. Let's see. Let's watch it. All right. California is my favorite state in the country. Right. California is my favorite state in the country. Right. So it's, it's like, obviously, they cut him out from saying an entire sentence and here it is i feel like you're, you're like a, a cuban like banana boat refugee from california you're like no, I, no I, like, I i've seen I, the other side brother I've it's not it. good you, it's not good it is not good it, that, that that prison has a beautiful weather it's still a prison so <laughs> it is really good weather over there it's, it's fucking great. fantastic it's california is my favorite state in the fucking country if everybody who lived there just didn't yeah i feel like you're, you're like a oh Oh my God, all of a sudden, all the context has changed. If all the people that lived in California didn't live in California, it'd be my favorite state. But he took that and, and turned it into... California uh, is my favorite state in the country. What a, what a load of shit. What a complete grifter. What was the one you wanted me to find? 
Oh, the one where he, uh, <laughs> keep going. It's further down. Which one was it about? Uh, <laughs> Brandon Herrera thinks that Texas was founded by people from the East Coast. It was. I know. The I'm aware. Bowie. <laughs> Bowie was from South oh, Carolina, oh. wasn't he? Or Virginia? Oh, he passed it. Did I pass it? Yeah, you passed it. I think. Donald Trump, no, I, I cause. Cause it would have Brandon Herrera in it. Right there. Where? Right there. No, that meme. Down. You passed it. It's a meme. It's just words. There's no picture, no like face pictures in it. Hundreds of illegal airmen six months. Or. Oh, there we I got it. I got it. Out of state congressional right candidate there. Brandon Herrera says Texas was built by East Coasters. And he's which is yeah. true. And it says, not that we expect a fraud from North Carolina like Brandon Herrera to understand, but Texans built Texas. No, you idiot. It was Easterners that moved to Texas that wanted to get away from the states that were already a state. And then this is my and then Texas was a territory owned by Mexico. They fought the Mexican government and were like, nah, man, we don't want to be a part of you. And Mexico was like, you're you moved here, you fucking assholes. And then they were like, yeah, but uh, we uh, we still want to be American, just not like the rest of America. And Mexico said, fuck you. We're, we're taking this shit back. And all those East Coasters that Team Tony says, all those East Coasters ended up dying in the Alamo. And then everybody, hence the quote, remembered the Alamo and beat Santa Ana back. And then Texas became its own republic. It's almost like this guy is retarded. Do you know that Brandon's registered to vote in North Carolina? <laughs> did you know that Tony's registered to vote in Florida? I did, actually. Which yeah. is true. And then that's... Oh, no, my God. We're getting, like, we're getting political, but not really. It's just kind of just people calling out bullshit. So it's like, it, there's no politics. It's just an asshole lying and us being like, nah, you're an asshole lying. But like Team Tony's like, oh, yeah, Brandon Herrera, he he's registered to vote in Carolina still. What a piece of shit. Like, all right, Tony, you're registered to vote in Florida. You've got property in Florida. You can vote there. Right. Uh, what's the fucking point? If I had it's property in California, New York, Florida, and Iowa, I could be registered to vote in all of those states. Um, you know, because I own property and I could vote on local representation. Oh. Oh. I don't know who runs his campaign, but I feel like it's the same person from the meme where there's like three or four stick figures shitting diarrhea and like exploding and bouncing off the walls. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. It's like Brandon Herrera's yes, campaign. I, do. I don't think that we, <laughs> Brandon Herrera's campaign, normal dudes just hanging out in the office. I don't really think that this guy has the best interest for Texas. Tony Gonzalez campaign. Just people vomiting and shitting and bouncing off the walls. It's look at the community notes below it. The Republic of Texas. This is the correction to Tony's stupid post. The Republic of Texas was founded with Sam Houston as its first president. Sam Houston is from Virginia, an East Coast state. It touches the fucking Pacific or Atlantic. Furthermore, Texans didn't exist before Texas. Therefore, Texas couldn't have been founded. Texans could not have founded Texas. Brendan Herrera is correct, both historically and logically. What, what do you do with that kind of information? Oh, I get that's right. He shit posts more thinking that it'll cover it up. I dude, his he was a Navy chief. And I love the Navy. They're great. But I have some issues with, with like, the chief rank. Because all Navy personnel that have not made the rank of chief and all the chiefs that are rational people have the same thing to say about chiefs. The second they get E7, the second they become a chief, they start losing their fucking mind. And they, get, and they start drinking the Kool-Aid of chief is super awesome. As strong as the anchor, 
as flexible as the chains, if I'm not mistaken, is like the slogan of the chief. And oh, you'll get no. these dudes that are like, are so brain dead to the people that are below them that they're supposed to be taking, that they're supposed to be in charge of and taking care of. Because that's what leadership is, right? Leadership isn't I shit on the people until they do what I tell them to do. It's I'm supposed to take care of them to accomplish the task. And it's like he fucking lost that. Brandon's one of his constituents. This guy is literally shitting on one of his constituents that are supposed to vote for him. This is the way that this guy treats people that are supposed to vote for him in his own, like, uh, general area. What's it called? District. District. Well, uh, well, then it's like, how much respect do you actually have for your constituents when you can, when you think that you can get on the internet and lie every single day about your opponent over and over and over again in like the most disingenuous and transparent way possible and think that like nobody cares and that nobody's going to notice. Like you have to think that everybody voting is just an idiot. An idiot, <clears throat> which is just insulting, but which makes me think he's a plant. You know what I mean? It makes me think he's a plant. It makes me think that like, and not the Republican party, but like the people that fund the Republican party or like this guy is milk toast enough that if we give him a little bit of money and put him in a position of power, he's going to want to stay there and then he's going to listen to us. And then he's so afraid of losing this position of power and losing all the good lickies and chewies and extra doodads and shit that his funding mommy and daddy give him that he's just going to say and do whatever he wants uh, as long as the money comes in and people that are blind to this just go, oh, he's, he says he's, he's Republican. Go we'll check the box. Yeah, he's he should be fine. Oh, you know what? Who's this Brandon Herrera guy? YouTube? I don't trust that. No, YouTube guys. Really. Oh, he was a master chief. E9, apparently. So it's chief, Ma According Sen to chat. chief, senior chief, and then master chief? I don't know Navy rank, to be honest. Master. That sounds a little racist, doesn't it? Wow. It's disheartening that Tony would take that master rank. Kind of racist. Oh, kind of racist. <laughs> Halo ranks. Yeah, that's the only reason that I know Navy rank is because of Halo. Navy is so... The Navy is so cool in the way that it's it's got so much history and tradition. But at the same time, it's so fucked up because it's so entrenched in its history and tradition that sometimes it, it won't... Has to be. The Navy's entire job is to talk shit. I listen. I'm not saying I don't like the Navy. I like the Navy. I'm just saying. Oh, me too. Why do you need seven different fucking uniforms? And if you need seven different uniforms, why can't the Army get two? Why can't we have two? We've got one. We have one. And then they go, "All right, put a bow tie on it. That's your dress uniform." You're like, "Come on, that's that's not cool." These guys got fucking khakis and whites and a weird dog bowl hat. We've got black berets. Remember when they forced black berets on all of us? The black beret used to be for rangers. And they were like, you know what we want to do? We want to make sure the guy in the motor pool isn't wearing a PC. We need to make sure he's wearing a beret while he's fixing a truck. Let's make everybody have a black beret. It was, it was the same time as ACUs. It was the dumbest shit. We can't make Don't sure. Listen, everybody's got a beret. We gotta have, everybody's got to have a beret. Otherwise, they're not going to be special. Uh, did I tell you I found I I heard a rumor how ACUs came into existence? It wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't. It's it's literally some general thought it'd be a good idea, and a company bought him out, and then he said, "Sounds good, company. I'm going to make it happen," and then said some bullshit to a general that was above him who was too fucking brain dead to say that doesn't make any sense, and then they did it. No, it's not the it's not the rumor I heard. So they had a they had a whole study done. They had like twenty different types of camo. They did studies for three years to pick the best one, hmm. and the best one that was picked was it wasn't multicam, but it looks awfully similar to multicam. Basically, the uniform we have now. Yeah. And, uh, allegedly, I was talking to a guy that claims that he knows the E7 that did this, but some E7 was getting the boards ready of the top five camouflages with all the data, and somebody fucked up and put this digicam in the multicam spot, 
and the general's like, yep, we're going with this one. And he was just too scared to correct him. So we just went with it. And that became the new uniform. There's no way. There's no way. I, That's such an easy fix. And for an E7 to be like, oh, excuse me, sir, I'm sorry. There was a mistake. We the, the, you laugh, but like that's why the SR seventy one's no. named the SR seventy one. No, no, you know no, that? no, 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 no. What you know you're that? doing right now, what you're doing right now, is officer propaganda. No, what I you're swear. doing is you're trying to say that a general who chose that camouflage and didn't say no later on is it? It's not his fault. It's the E seven who put made a, a a Pinterest board, a Pinterest board. Really? Either way. Weren't you enlisted? Do you know about the SR-71 you? Rich? What? Do you know about the SR-71? Don't, oh, don't, change the, oh, don't change the channel on me. We're not on a commercial break. Don't you ever try to pin some general shit oh on the E7 God. ever again. You heard from what? Your asshole whispering that some E7 made a Pinterest board in real life and then was too afraid to be like, ah, sorry, I fucked up the numbers, general. Let me just like take this pin, move it with this pin and blah, blah, blah. This is the actual thing. You know, you're even less intimidating through the internet. Oh, I know I am. That's why you're always more quiet when we're in person. Because you feel the rage. Heat comes off of me like a dog's loins when they're in heat. Like you can put your hand up against a bitch's snatch and you can feel the radiant heat from it when she's like ready to be mounted. Same like me. The second you get me like a little bit turned on, with the shenanigans, you get me a little hot. You could just like put your hand around my head and heat radiates off of it. This is true. It's a fact. Can I tell you about the SR-71 now? Oh, like oh yeah. How did the enlisted men fuck up the SR-71 now? Please. Well, the president. What the president did? The, the SR-71 is actually supposed to be the RS-71. R stands for recon. What's that stand right? for? Ship? Uh, Recon... I, for, I fucking forget. I Recon it was slut. Supposed to be, it was supposed to be the RS-71, and when the president announced it in his speech, he fucked it up and said the SR-71, and the military is like, fuck it, we're going with that, I don't care. And they just renamed it after the president fucked it up. I mean, that sounds about right. They're like, you know what? Uh, SR-71 sounds pretty good. Strategic, Recon Strategic 71. Surveillance? Strategic or surveillance? Recon surveillance. surveillance. Well, I mean, recon and surveillance. No, recon and surveillance. That's it's not. They're not total synonyms. It makes sense. Like reconnoiter and then stay and surveil. That makes sense. So then what? They just switched it around. All right, now it's surveil and recon. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't make a difference. It's just funny. The president fucked it up and nobody wanted to correct him, so they just changed the name. Well, you know, I'm, you know, oh, I'm a little surprised Chuck too because our current president ACT tripped up some stairs. I, I thought they were going to change it all to escalators after that. Oh, to truck says I'm secretly super nice and loving. Not at all. True. Nope. This is true. Nope. Nope. What you see on the internet is what you get. I'm loud and obnoxious 24 seven. Test it. Figure it out. Don't shake your head at me. They haven't seen the most recent unsub. They don't know how mad I can get. That's a great unsub. By the way. It, it's got to It's I'm not gonna lie. I think it's our best episode. It's like, I'm dude. gonna be completely honest. If all of that gets put on the internet, we're all getting canceled. There's no way. Oh yeah. Did... <laughs> with, <laughs> with the the new shirt design about pallets and <laughs> pallets other concepts. That's, dude, if you don't make that, if you, dude, seriously, if you don't make that into a shirt, I was serious. If you don't make it into a shirt, I'm gonna make it into a shirt. <laughs> oh, you better, you better text me on the side. You better text me on the side if you're not gonna make that a shirt. Okay. I was serious. I was like, that's that's a hysterical shirt. Oh, good. What By the way, if you haven't subscribed to unsubscribe to know what we're talking about, <laughs> if you've got some time to kill and you're on a treadmill, you look up fat and angry on on sub and we uh i'll say it's some of the, it's going to be the most entertaining it's time that you spend okay. on a treadmill or pooping. if you don't know what unsubscribe is imagine imagine four dudes getting going up drunk and then getting progressively more drunk over the course of a three-hour conversation yes as aggressively as possible yeah and then like talking shit about each other just trying to say the most offensive things 
to trip up the other person in their conversation. We None of us mean it. We just sit there trying to say the most offensive thing to get the other guy to stop in the middle of his story and go, what did you say? Wow. That's not, um, that can't possibly be right. Who? What? Yeah, you're right. We could turn, uh, we could probably take that two hours and 14 minutes and comb it down to 45 minutes of stuff that <laughs> can't go off the Patreon. Yep. <laughs> we got aggressive. Fadar Sound says, sounds like a normal unsub episode. You're absolutely right. Oh, no, it's worse. It's, we, we, it's way worse. I, I was on one. I was on one that day. Yeah, it's bad. And then I kept poking you guys to say more offensive shit, and then you eventually, you broke, and you all followed me. This is true. Speaking of you, I was talking with King Trout about you, like, last night or the night before. I love him. And Connor, he said Connor's that, a very uh, handsome your, man. Your ability to find the one thing that he's most self-conscious about and keep throwing it in his face repeatedly is unrivaled. <laughs> Listen... <laughs> I don't want him. <laughs> I don't listen. You need this sounds wrong, but it's it's right. He shouldn't feel special. I do that to a lot of people. I'm very good at finding a thing and then poking it. And and then and I do it from from a place of love because I like them. So if I poke fun at it, Anybody who's actually being a dickhead that does it to like get a rise out of them, they're less effective because I've already done it. And then, you know, once you make fun of somebody's like thing that they're whatever about, they can fucking relax and enjoy the rest of the time drinking and hanging out with people. Because guess what? You caught out the pimple on their forehead and now everybody knows that it's there and now you don't have to worry about it because it's already been aired out and we can just fucking deal with it and go. It's hilarious. It's from different levels. That's funny that he said that. I wonder what I said to him the other day that, that got him with that. I'm not going to say it on the internet, but I'll tell you later. Oh, I hope you do. It'll make me giggle. <laughs> I'll tell you later. It's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even remember what it is because I talk so much shit to everybody all the time. He said, he said you did it within the first 10 minutes of meeting him in Las Vegas, and then you kept doing it the entire time we were in Las Vegas. That sounds about right. I think I, I I think I might know what it is. Yeah, I'm pretty good at that, dude. It how hard I'm hard to handle, man. I'm hard to handle. If you don't know that I'm like just busting balls, and I'm like, and if if you don't know that I'm saying it to like get a rise, you know, and have a good time, the second that somebody else says it, and I yell at them to shut the fuck up. It, that's usually when it clicks for other people because I've had that happen where I've been, I poked fun at somebody, a friend of a friend or a new person that's in the group and I'm like, hey, blah, blah, let me bust your balls and catch you up on the way that I talk to everybody else. And if and people either one, they handle it and they're like, okay, it's just my five minutes, you know, and he'll bounce on something else. And I do. And then we all, you know, laugh at it, right? Or they get super offended and they're gone. And then the other thing is like just completely from the side from that is, is if somebody else says that to somebody that I like, then I just turn on them and I go, what the, what'd you say to my friend? Well, you don't get to say that. You don't know him. You're not part of this group. You're not special. You smell weird. Well, I bet your armpit hair is a little bit longer than the rest of the hair in your body and you're self-conscious about it. Why don't you trim it? It sounds like it'd be such a simple thing. And then, you know, it, that gets in their head and then all of a sudden they're just like crying in the corner. Because nobody yeah, gets to make fun of my friends except show. for me. Just going out into the crowd, berating the audience. Oh, dude, I ripped apart Dallas. I ripped apart Dallas. I would San Antonio was pretty funny. Like I was I was trying to be a little tame there. For those of you who don't know what's going on, unsubscribed uh podcast did a live podcast in four different cities across Texas. San Antonio, which was the first night and I was there. Austin, uh Houston, which I went to to watch the show, and then Dallas, I was a surprise guest with Meat Canyon. And I went out into the crowd in Dallas and I started just ripping apart the crowd. It was, it was pretty hysterical. It was good. There was a young lady there and I was like, madam, why would you wear such a revealing top? And she was, and then I asked her how old she was and she was like 19. And I was like, <laughs> that was close. <laughs> 
I made fun of the guy's hair. I mean, like, these are things that you had to be there for. Like, I didn't just go, hey, nice hair, and then walked away. I ripped apart his hair for, like, a good 30 seconds just pooping on him. Talk about the, uh, the lady with the oxygen. Oh, that's right. In San Antonio, there was a lady that had um, a physical ailment, and she needed uh, to breathe extra oxygen, which I thought was selfish when she thinks she's better than me because she needs more oxygen. Fucking rude. And I said that to her and her husband. And uh, her husband that was there, I was like, hey, man, that's, uh, that's pretty cool that you could just take her breath away like that. Anyway, here's my question. And I just, uh, I just started ripping out. I believe she was in a wheelchair, too. I think she was. But it, yeah, nobody's safe. What am I going to do? Just like go look at the lady in the wheelchair and just be like, you know what? I can't make fun of you because you're soft. No, she's, she's fucking harder than all of us. She's dealt with more shit in her life that has made her tougher mentally than all of us have, except for other people that have like gotten blown up and burnt and shit in Iraq. No, those people can fucking handle it. They're great. They're fantastic at like observational humor. And I couldn't tell if she was laughing or not because she was wheezing the entire time. But either way, I'm glad that she was there. <laughs> Fucking chat. Go for the wheelchair woman. Yes. It's it's a go. Listen, I don't I don't I don't take hostages, man. There's no hostages here. Oh. Have you seen the new unsub merch? That I designed. Hold on. Oh, I designed it. I designed a shirt for Autism Awareness Month and we're <gasps> donating the fingers a hundred percent of the proceeds that we make to uh, Eli has a particular uh, autism research charity that he likes and we're going to donate all the money to it. Is it on Bunker Branding? Yes. Should I just go to Bunker Branding? Uh, yeah, probably. That or just go to unsubcrew.com. Uh, merch button right there. Or not. Uh, it's like 10 seconds delayed. Oh, uh, okay. Unsub merch? Uh, oh, there's all your stuff on here. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, my new med pack's up. I didn't even know that was up yet. I don't... Oh, two... Page two? Three? It's on uh, the third page, to, dude. Hit the three lines, and then just go to influencers and hit unsubscribe. Oh, no, that's that's the Spectrum gunship. Hold on. Yeah. There it is. Tis and touch? No. Is it full metal spectrum? Yes. Oh my gosh. That is it is it only a limited time? Yeah. Oh, I gotta buy one. I thought, dude, I thought this was brilliant. So this is <laughs> born to math. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. That's so good. Thomas the tank engine. Because they love trains! Because they love trains. <laughs> Dude, I love people with autism. They're 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 brilliant. They're absolutely brilliant. And so like people might be like, how can you tell you they love to math? They like trains. Yeah, man. They like specific things that are difficult for the normal human brain to understand. They like difficult. Here's why autistic people like math, right? It's a straight shot. There is a theorem. There is a singular answer at the end. There is no imagination that where you have to like come up with your own thing. It is I follow A to B to C to D and I get the answer I'm supposed to. So they're phenomenal at math. And trains are similar. Locomotives have so many moving parts, it doesn't make sense. They're, they're metal wheels on a metal track and they go a million miles an hour and transport so much of the world's freight. Of course they're interesting. Why wouldn't they be? Full metal spectrum. I'm going to buy, I got one probably going to buy two because I don't want the first one to wash out. I'm going to wear it so much. 
Oh yeah, that was uh, that was a design. So 100% of the proceeds, uh, like everything, 100% of the proceeds go to. Do we know the name of the uh, of the fund? Well, it should be. I made the Instagram post. It's like Limited the autism, only, uh, autism awareness research Foundation. organization for autism research. Oh, that is what it's called. OAR, which is yep. the same name of a band that I did not like at all in high school. So, yeah. Well, I can't put my credit card information on while we're live streaming. Right now, yeah. Yeah, later. at the moment. I will have to do it later on. But that Born to Math is so good. I'll probably... Yeah, I'll definitely buy two. I'm, I'm going to buy two. Oh, good. You know what? Good. I think that's how we're going to end this one. Is on a positive note. Of all the negative, stupid shit that I've said. To include the things yeah, that I mean, you deserved. Because you're dumb. For sure. I mean... Um, only we, good things have happened tonight. I mean, like we're raising money for autism. We're selling shirts. You follow me on YouTube. Now you're subscribed. I always followed you on YouTube. Um, you dickhead. I just didn't follow you on all of my accounts. Do you know what I do? Listen, do you, oh, you fucking got me going again. You know what I do? I, whenever I go to an Airbnb and somebody leaves their, uh, YouTube account on, they don't sign out. I make them follow myself, obviously. And then you Donut and Brandon, like that's it. I go, I go, I make sure that they follow them. So if you get a random person in your comment section that says, I don't know when I followed you, but I, I like your stuff. You're welcome. You're welcome. That, that's hundred percent me because they never followed you. I did. I followed you from an Airbnb that they were in a week ago. And then they, they kept themselves signed into YouTube's. You're like a you're you're like a rogue, a rogue agent just getting all your friends YouTube subscribers. I like it. I'm just chaotic. I, I feel like I want to say chaotic good, but I feel like I'm chaotic neutral. Maybe I'm chaotic good. I uh, maybe maybe. Some days well, I'm chaotic. What's the? I need to pull up the full chart to properly diagnose you. Diagnosed? There's a T in there. I have a stuffy nose, Rich. Oh, I can't oh help yeah, it. that stuffy nose sounds like Jim Beam. Yeah. I'm having to should sound like Guinness. Mm. Are you looking at like a the breakdown? Yeah, of you're you're somewhere between chaotic neutral and God. You might be true neutral actually because it's stuck in between lawful neutral and chaotic neutral. You might be true neutral. What is the what is the definition of true neutral? I feel like I'm chaotic neutral because sometimes things need to be weird. I don't know, man. You might be, you might be true neutral. I was really hoping like that I could be Deadpool and be chaotic good. You're Snape from Harry Potter. I'm nowhere near that you're, stoic. Are you kidding the, me? You just compared me to the, Snape? The guy that doesn't the say blue. how he loved a woman for 20 fucking years? And you to me? To this idiot on the fucking screen? Are you are you full metal spectrum? Those crayons should have a bite out of them. You know who you are in Star Wars? If I was a chaotic wait, what one? If I was if I was chaotic true neutral? neutral. No, true neutral. True neutral. Yep. Qui-Gon Jin? No. You're the uh, you're the blue alien with the wings and the penis nose that owns Anakin in Episode One. I'm the negative stereotype for Jews. He's the living Rich? epitome of negative stereotypes for Jews. I talk like this. I have a big nose. I don't care about people. I like to make money. Your dicks don't work on me. I never realize this, dude. You never, dude. There's so many. I'm not the first one to say this, so don't everybody get. Don't don't never have Team Tony sit on my fucking dick and be like Richard I says anti-Semitic. No, 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 no. There's been tons of comedians that have said the same thing. So don't fucking jump on me like I'm the first one to think of it. No, there are other people that deserve the credit. Yeah, it's like the biggest. If you look at it, it's like the it's like a walking 
epitome of every negative stereotype for Jews. A short, small, squatty guy with a big nose, irritates everybody, only cares about money. You know, man, it's no more than oh me. It, it sounds like it sounds like a Borat episode. I feel like you're, Borat you're... just like determined how much he didn't like Jews based on that character. You're Mr. Gibbs from Pirates of the Caribbean. Who the fuck is Mr. Gibbs? Uh, Jack Sparrow's right hand man with the mutton chops. That he always finds drunk in a pig pen to help him with his adventures. Nah, nah, I'm chaotic good. There's no way I'm chaotic neutral. All these people are lame as shit, and they don't do anything. Well, lawful neutral is the dude with the octopus beard, so... I'm not lawful neutral. I said chaotic. Who's chaotic neutral? Oh, chaotic That's Jack Sparrow. All right, well, who's chaotic lawful? Tentacle beard. There is no chaotic lawful. There is lawful neutral, chaotic good, true neutral, chaotic neutral. What's chaotic good? God, that's not a thing. I'm missing the whole thing. Uh, where are you? Where are you uh, seeing this? Hold on. I need. Where are you seeing type this? In, type in chaotic good on Google Images and pull it up, and it'll just be memes. It'll list them all, and it'll show the different characters for each movie. All right. Yeah, I'm chaotic good. I'm V. I'm either V or I'm neutral good. Which is, uh, what's his face? There's, there's, there's a 0% chance that you're neutral good. Yeah, I'm chaotic good. I'm chaotic good. I know, <laughs> I know. Like, I know. You good. tried to say I was neutral for like the past like five minutes and I'm like, there's no way. Yeah, I'm chaotic. I tried to say you were true neutral. You're somewhere between lawful and chaotic. Governments should be afraid of their people. Yeah, no, I'm chaotic good. Like, if you took chaotic good and lawful good and, like, mixed them together, I think that would be me. Like, neutral good oh, is definitely not neutral? it. neutral? No. No, because neutral is its own thing. Neutral doesn't pick a side. I pick a side on both sides. I'm complicated. Right, so they cancel out, so it's neutral. If you're good and bad and mix them together, it's neutral, Rich. Okay, yeah, I'm neutral good. I'll take that. I'm neutral good. There we go. Yeah, I'll take that. I'm neutral good. I'm a mix of both. Yeah, sometimes I follow the rules because... The rules are good and they make sense. And sometimes I go, well, 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 you know, sometimes the fastest way isn't, you know, around. It's right through the center. Sometimes you just got to dig a deeper hole to get out of a hole. Don't even get me fucking started. Don't even get me fucking started. Don't even get me started. For Oh, you fucking dick. Dude, for everybody that doesn't know what, the, what he's talking about, I made a video about the bullshit basic training and Ray Cash, who's... Like, I, I don't know what you think about Ray Cash. I don't know him. I never met him. I just know, I know a little, I know enough about him through a bunch of people. I don't think he's a turd. I, but I just, I don't know that he's not a turd. I'm neutral when it comes to him, right? Neutral, neutral. But anywho, he made a statement and he's like lifting some weights and he's trying to be motivational. And he says, yeah, people, you know, people ask me all the time, Ray, how do I dig myself out of this hole? And I tell him, you know what you got to do? You gotta dig deeper, man. You can't get out of that hole. You just gotta dig deeper. What the fuck does that mean? It means fucking nothing. It means absolutely nothing. It's like a speech from Kamala Harris. It means nothing. You just talk in circles. It means nothing. Poor Ray. But you, too many people surrounded Ray and told him that what he did was brilliant and amazing and he changed their life. And then he just stopped reading books. Yeah. If you were disciplined enough, you would clearly understand that he meant that you had to dig through the planet to get out of the hole. Yeah, but then you'd be in communist China, and now you'd be in communism. So is Ray Cash telling us to be communist now, Nick? Because I can't stand for that. Oh, yeah, we're going to fight the communists, Rich. So we're digging down deep to fight the communists. Yeah. You ever played Gears of War? It's the same, same concept. I love Gears of War. I loved Gears of War. The first two. 
the rest of them after that were kind of mad. I never played the third one. Is the third one garbage? I just played number two. Number two is the shit. Number two is the shit. It, it's like okay. uh, the third one, I think, is when his son comes in. Ah, gross. Yeah, it's like weird. Combat Medic is like, would you guys associate with me? You have a Maroon Beret. Yeah, you get a Maroon Beret. I'll deal with you, Airborne. Um, yeah, communism, communism gave us the AK. Gave the AK. No. Get the fuck out of here. Fun Russians. Fact. Russians gave us the AK. No, did they America the... gave us the AK. How did America give us the AK? The AK's entire firing mechanism is literally an M1 Grand that they turned 90 degrees. The AK is based off of the M1 Grand. Per usual, communists stole American technology, slightly modified it, and played it off like it was awesome. Right. If you don't believe me, ask Brandon Herrera. And he loves AKs. He loves Which is AKs. why he's American. I, I said that. You want to know what he said? He's out of line, but he's not wrong. <laughs> yep. I think I remember that, actually. Oh. On that note, it's been an yeah. hour and a half, and I don't know what the hell to name this episode. So, live with the fat electrician, and then what? You put it in the comments. Don't put it in live chat. Put it in the comments. That way I'll know what to name this shit so people no, can see it. This has to be a reoccurring theme if we're going to keep doing this. What's that? I don't know. It's got to be like fat and angry something. Well, it's live. Live with the fat electrician and then whatever we talk about. We already have our shtick for the unsub. We already have our shtick. Yeah. Don't you? You yeah, can't no, steal this, our shtick. You can't AK-47 our shtick. No, let's, let's, be, let's be skinny and happy live. Dad jokes don't make good titles. No. Yes, they do. No, it's live with the fat okay. electrician because it's my channel, Angry Streams, live with the fat electrician, and then something interesting that we talk about. That's what Your it's going to be. Your channel that wasn't subscribed. Yeah, this channel will never be subscribed if you try to tell me how to put some lame dad joke as the title for a video again. You're absolutely right. That's why. This is this is why we need the... This is separation of church and state, the three pillars of the government, the executive, executive judicial, and legislative, Right? This is our difference, right? I can't be following you on this channel because... I would have bet my left nut that you would have fucked that up, but you nailed it, and I'm, I'm blown away. <laughs> All right. I, I don't think you'll do it, but if you're bored, if you're bored, if anybody else is bored... Oh, God. There is a man in Buffalo who is kind of a sovereign citizen, but mainly oh, just God. an asshole that tries to, like bait police into hitting him because he's just a piece of shit and his name is The Raven uh, and a couple years ago The Raven um, on his Facebook channel I think it's called The Raven uh, out of Buffalo, New York uh, tried to get in the middle of a domestic issue I won't say anything more than that but it was a domestic and was acting like the person that we were talking to in a vehicle was like pulled over. And like, they, you don't have to talk to them. You don't have to talk to them. You just because they pulled you over. I'm like, no, this this person is in this person called us to help them. So don't be a fucking asshole. But we can't say that because it's this person's personal business. So like, what are they pulled over for? It it's none of your business. We're not gonna tell you what they're pulled over for. It's none of your business because it isn't because it was a personal matter that she had to get the police involved with, unfortunately, and go fuck yourself, dude. So he gets all up his own ass. You, you don't have to talk to them. You don't have to talk to them. Blah, 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 blah. So I know. Brown code of military justice. Brown's rules of law. Code of law. All this fucking nonsense shit, right? And But then he talks to me a semi-educated law enforcement person now. And he starts like rattling off, you know, do you know these amendments in a very arrogant tone? So the Raven on Facebook, and this is a couple of years ago, probably like three or four, is like rattling, do you know this amendment? Do you know that amendment? And he, and he starts, you know, do you know what the Fourth Amendment is? I go, yes, I know what the Fourth Amendment is. He's like, what is it? I'm like, well, it's your right to, un you know, it's, I go, it's unreasonable search and seizure. He goes, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. It's a right for their, each person to be secure in their personal... I go, yeah, dude, that's what I said. 
unreasonable search and seizure. I just I broke it down into four words. What are, you, what are you doing? And he starts like rattling off like different amendments. Did you know this amendment? You know, you know what? You owe me this amount of money for talking to me. I go, no, we don't. I, I go, we're having a conversation. He's like, I don't apply to this contract. I go, it's not a contract. You're in public space. I go, I'm just talking out loud in your general direction. It's your choice whether or not to talk to me. And I'm being very cordial. I'm being very polite. And then he starts, you know, up once again, do you know this amendment? Do that? I go, well, do you know what the 13th amendment is? He's like, well, well, no. I went about the 14th amendment. These are both very important. Like, these are very important. 14th Amendment being the women's right to vote, which I don't say. And he's like, well, you know, do you know, you know, do you know this, you know, what this legal statute is? So and so versus the state of so and so. And it starts like blasting off all these Supreme Court hearings. I'm like, oh, interesting. Awesome. I'm like, well, do you know who what Roe versus Wade is? Can you tell me Roe versus Wade, which is abortion? And he doesn't know what, what Roe versus Wade is because he's so blind on trying to trip me up on police and search and seizure first. And fourth, first, second, and fourth, well, not second, but first and fourth amendment rights. And I'm just like, well, what's, what's Roe versus Wade? If you know all these fantastic uh, Supreme Court decisions, what, what is it? What is it? What, what is Brown versus Board of Education? What's Brown versus Board of Education? Do you know what that is? Well, that's segregation. Like, well, how about Pennsylvania versus Mims? You know what Pennsylvania versus Mims is? That's when a police officer who deems that you may, or has a reasonable fear that you may be armed, can request can order you out of a vehicle and you have to uh you have to uh you have to you have to get out of the vehicle. Do it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. The Raven on Facebook. He's got a YouTube channel. I don't know if it's the Raven. It's garbage. It's just him completely being an utter asshole to police officers. Just like he goes into district station houses and like berates police officers and then the police officer's like, all right, listen, man, let me get you my lieutenant. And then the police officer tells the lieutenant, this guy's being a real jerk. Can you please tell him to leave? And then the, the lieutenant goes and talks to him for 20 minutes until the lieutenant's like, oh, God, this guy's just a jerk. Just trying to bait me into doing something stupid and wasting my time instead of me actually patrolling the community and helping them out and answering 911 calls. And then the captain comes in. And captain's like, hold on, let me handle this. And then for another 20 minutes, he takes the captain's time who could be out addressing issues with the community until the captain is like, oh my God, this guy's an asshole. He's just being a jerk. Sir, you need to leave. Sir, you, I am in charge of this district station house. I am now telling you that you are not here for a police matter. You need to leave. Good day. And it's, it's just, he's just a flaming asshole. Like you could do a lot of things and they're legal, right? But you could open carry. And people can see you with your firearm, which is not smart because, you know, I mean, it's a good thing that we have the right to do it, but it's, if you're trying to carry. Also, you're getting shot first. Yeah, correct. Like you're the guy that's got the gun that peep, the bad guy is going to go and grab and notices first. Right. But look, I get it because an armed population is a polite population. So I understand it. Right. doesn't mean I'm going to do it, but I understand it. You know what else is legal to run up and down the street and say the N word, right? You can run up and down the street and sing John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt and use negative stereotypes and the N-word, hard R, as long as you want. That's legal. It's your, your, doesn't mean doesn't mean that you're a good person when you do it. Going up, and for no reason, other than to try and get a police officer to shoot you or to bait somebody and, and, and just objectify to them some, some ridiculous bullshit is not right. And for those people that are like, well, it's their second man. All right, here's the deal, right? If the FBI and police can't entrap you in a crime, why then are you trying to entrap a police officer into exceeding his authority? You're, you're literally the opposite of the Fed version of, of, of doing... Like, ugh, it's just... I was going to end this like 40 minutes ago and you keep no, getting fine. me on these fucking tangents. I have a question though. What's that? The chat keeps saying like, we should get an Iowa Buffalo shirt. We should get a this, that Buffalo. Why do they keep bringing up Buffalo when you're from Boston? First of all, that means nothing to me coming from you. Absolutely nothing. That means nothing. People don't know. They'll figure it out soon that I had the greatest insult ever dropped on my lap. By accident, 
No, it wasn't by accident. He was, he was, you know, he was busting balls. Well, actually, you know what? It wasn't even a joke. He was being honest. He was being honest. When he, I, I'm not even gonna say it. I'm not even gonna say it. You need to watch unsubscribed. I don't know when my episode comes out, but Leon Lush shows up in it for like a quick cameo for like five minutes. And I tell you the best insult I ever had given to me. And it was by Leon Lush. Leon Lush got me like legitimately really good with an insult. And I, and I was taken aback. You look at you giggling like an idiot. You could never do what Leon did. I love it. You could never do what he did. I've been doing it this whole stream. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. All right. On that note, I have to shut this guy up. Otherwise, we're going to be here for three days. Otherwise, I'll get him going again. Somebody said trucks that by says bold talk from Mason City. On Old that note, leave me alone. <laughs> I don't even know if that's a real city. Hey, you know what? Good luck. Go to any city in the fucking Midwest and try and find him. You never know which where he lives. He's moving anyway, yeah. so it doesn't matter if you do. Go to, find the giant cornfield. Look for the white guy in the hat wearing a Carhartt jacket. Oh, that'll be me. Damn. I stick out. You gave very, very specific. You gave it away, Nick. I, I'm sure everybody knows where to find you, but if they don't, I'm here. I'm Nick. I'm the fat electrician on everything. Go to thefatelectrician.com. Thefatelectrician.com has links to, I believe, both of your YouTube accounts. Um, cool. Not only just the fat electrician, but also like you have a new channel where you're doing like. Just stuff that you piss off. Oh my you god, off. we're gonna keep this stream going now because I forgot about my other talking point. What's your other talk point? Oh, I'm so mad. My next fat so my, my next channel is the fat files, right? Yes, yeah, so your second channel is the fat getting, files. Getting drunk and yelling, right? Yeah. Um Oh, tell me more. It's my next video. Well, I took my kids for a fucking happy meal tonight. Happy meal toys are garbage now. I don't know what happened. They're garbage. It's literally, like, I opened the Happy Meal toy for my kid, and I was like, oh, I can just put this directly in the fucking trash. You remember when they were Furbies, and people were fighting over yeah. them? I remember when they were, like, fucking McDonald's French fries that folded out into binoculars, and when Burger King was giving away gold Pokemon cards yes. that were inside of Pokeballs. Yes. And now, where the fuck is it? I brought it down here, because I'm going to put it in my video. I was so fucking mad. It's like... It was literally like a piece of fucking cardboard with a fucking cutout of a llama on it. And then you stuck it on a piece of plastic and it stood up. Dude. It looked like a fucking board piece, like a, a piece from a board game. You wanna, and that was his happy meal toy. You're touching on something that I think is at the core of what's bringing America down. <laughs> and Which is a bold statement. I'm telling you right now. Well, I agree. The, and I'll tell you, you know what's bringing America down? Is like from the, especially, especially... From like the 80s to the early 2000s, if you don't have money, you're not having a good time. It was like the thing that was like pumped out through American culture. If you don't have money, you're poor. If you're poor, you can't have fun. You need to have money to have fun. You need to have money to have a good life. Money, 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 money. Fuck you. No, you don't. No, you don't. You can be poor as fucking shit and natty light is cheap as fuck and you can get a couple of bros together roast some chicken wings on the barbecue that costs like five dollars that you got from lowe's and you can have a hell of a day now unfortunately i mean right now our economy is so bad and our and the inflation is so fucking terrible in the past i want to say like three or four years wonder what that could be from uh how, how mad do you want to get right now oh tell me i'm wrong do you it, have you no have drums? you seen Subway's new selling point? The like the quarter sandwich? What's Subway's slogan? Like our whole lives. Five dollar foot long. Five dollar. Right? Five dollar five foot long. You wanna know what their new fucking thing is? Seven dollar foot longs. What? Six dollars six inch. That's their new marketing pitch. Six dollars six inch. It just came out like this week. That sounds like a slogan for me. Remember being back when a Dollar Tree star. used to be a fucking dollar rich? What's that? Do you remember back when Dollar Tree used to be a dollar? Do you remember a when a gallon of milk tree? was less than a gallon of gas? And I used to make jokes all the time 
man, gas is so expensive, I could just run my car on milk. And now, milk's fucking $12 a gallon. Dude, I, I said it like, my favorite snack used to be drumsticks, right? You go to a fucking, any Mart, H-E-B, Wegmans, Tops, and Buffalo, right? You get a dozen drumsticks. Six bucks. Six bucks. They're the cutoffs, because everybody wants the breasts, or they want boneless thighs, but nobody wants the drumsticks. And so you throw them in the oven, and you put a little bit of spice on them. You're, you throw them in the fridge. Whenever you're hungry, you want a good snack, especially if you're bodybuilding or trying to lose weight. It's just protein. You eat a drumstick cold out the fridge, or maybe if you want to warm, you throw it in the in, in the micro. Either way, six, seven bucks for a dozen drumsticks. Dude, it's like 16, 20 bucks now for drumsticks with the skin on them, not even skinless, right? Dude, food, food is ridiculously expensive in the past three years. Do I, oh I man, I don't want to. I don't want to get political because, like, it, I've never had a presidency so directly affect my life as the Biden presidency. Bush, senior, I don't know. Clinton, I don't know. Bush, junior. All right, nine eleven, but you know he didn't make nine eleven supposedly. You were in Iraq like seventeen times. <laughs> so yeah, like, oh, I was in Iraq. All right, so Bush directly affected my life that way. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Obama didn't affect my life that much, except for like hating on troops and Hillary Clinton shitting on the military the entire time. Um, all right, so they kind of did. But even even me overseas, that was something I chose to do. I chose to join the military. I knew I was going to get deployed, right? I didn't choose to have my grocery prices go up literally three or four times in, th in three years. And then his... His dumb fucking secretary of whatever the fuck, that dumb curly-haired bitch that's like, you know what, our, our economy's actually doing a lot better. Yeah, from last year when you tanked it, you dumb they, cunt. How do they calculate where they determine, like, what inflation is at? Because, like, whenever they're like, oh, inflation's only went up, like, 2%, I was like, that doesn't feel right to me. I feel like I spend way more than 2% more money on gas and food and, like, normal everyday shit. That... That's exactly it. You, like, you can't tell me that inflation is only up like, oh, one or two percent for like, but how does that affect my dollar, right? All right, inflation's up one or two percent. What does that make a dollar worth though? 50 fucking cents? Because let me tell you right now, plywood is ridiculously expensive. Particle board is expensive. All construction equipment, or not equipment, um, materials are four times what they were in COVID and they're staying there? The shipping is back. The shipping should have brought everything back down at least a little bit. And it did up until fucking, oh, three years ago. Yeah. Uh, uh, according to chat, mortgages, cars, gas, and groceries aren't counted in the in the inflation calculation. Oh, so where um, every American the spends their money. For a normal person. Dude, my mortgage is at like, I, I was like, I need a deal. I'm going to put, you know, 10, 20% down. What can I get? They're like 7.7% interest. I'm like, what? Excuse me? They're like, yeah, yeah, take it or leave it. Yeah, I know. Trucks Empire, you're absolutely right. I'm going to sleep early. Yeah, because I got to wake somebody up tomorrow. Well, now, well, he's going to have a bad day and I'm going to have a bad day now because I got no sleep. I just had to prove that I could get you going again because you said I couldn't. My you can bad. get me going again. I didn't say you can't get me going. I, you know what pushes my buttons. You know yeah. you know how to flip the switch. I said that in the beginning. I give you that credit. You know how to fucking flip the switch. I didn't say you didn't. You were just like, well, I'm going to see something's going to get you going. I was like, oh. I don't give a shit. Go ahead. Oh, just like a fucking grenade that I get to pull the pin on over and over again it's so much fun don't say it over and over again like that when you're talking about me it's very very inappropriate there's children in the audience potentially maybe if a child is watching this they're fucked up I'm glad that we decided you're the tree beard from lord of the rings who is i'm not the true neutral i'm neutral good that tree you can i tell you something that tree fucking pissed me off in that movie no, oh, it's not affecting my life. Tree. I don't have to do shit. You know what? That's a fucking lazy American. That true neutral. 
That's a lazy American. Don't get involved with your community. Don't vote because nothing fucking matters. And then wonder why the world's crumbling around you and why your gas Those prices are up. trees took out an entire one of the two towers. Oh, they yeah, because all of a sudden they realized that one of their friends, they were, they were walking um, Pippin and what's-his-face away. They're like, hey, sorry, kids, we can't fucking help you. And then all of a sudden it was too late and their friends were dead and burnt to a crisp. And they go, oh, no, oh, no. Oh, no, I knew these trees. I was friends with these trees. And then they start throwing rocks and shit. Too little, too late. Tree bitch. God, I hate those characters. The fucking lazy Why? ass trees. No. Stupid. They're dope. They're dumb. They did half the work. They if you want to be mad at anybody, be mad at Gandalf when he could have just summoned those big ass eagles and flown Frodo's ass straight to the volcano with skip the whole series. Yeah, but you can't do that. It is a Why? story. There was some reason. I, I remember seeing that. Like, that's everybody's bitch. But there's, like, a, a, a reason in the, in the lore that is Lord of the Rings as to why he couldn't do that. And I forget what it was. But there's, like, a legitimate reason. Like, hey, uh, you know, the Eagles take off for Christmas. So, you know, they're a union. Can't work on those days. Typical it was Boston legitimate. guy hates trees. What's that? <laughs> and your cops hate trees. Yeah, I do. I hate lazy trees. I hate lazy fucking trees. Tell me I'm wrong. You want a skinny ass tree that doesn't do no work? Doesn't drink no water? Doesn't produce oxygen for you? Fuck lazy trees. Dumbest shit in the world. They deserve to be burnt. Fuck them. They, they made oxygen, <laughs> oxygen and took out one of the two towers, Rich. They did a lot. After... After they were told to help, decided no, and then were like, all right, let me at least give you a free ride home, like a pity fuck. And then, and then they say, oh shit, there's a bajillion of my friends dead. Oh, now that it's too late to save them, I guess I'll get involved. Imagine, imagine, if you will, you're in New York and a guy comes up it's a friend of yours, you know, friend of a friend. Hey, Nick. Uh, there's a bunch of assholes going through your mom's town, and they're killing people. Uh, you might want to go check just on. Hit the second tower. <laughs> the tree. <laughs> a tree just hit the second. The second tower. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see it until you said it. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, man. That's brilliant. I can't even finish my... I mean, I can, but that was so good. A <laughs> tree just did the second tower. Oh. But yeah, imagine that. Imagine, like, somebody comes up to your house, and they're like, hey, Nick, uh, this, the city in which your mom lives in, uh, there's a bunch of people, like, killing old women. You might want to check on your mom, you know, probably get over there and, you know, tell the local congressman that they should do something about it. And you're like, nah, I'm good. But I'll give you a ride home since you live right next to my mom. And you're like, okay. And then you drive by your mom's house and there she is bloody and dead on the stoop. And you're like, you know what? I'm going to go fix this now. No, nah, you're just, you're, you're fucking, you're like everybody that let the Jews die in the second world war. You're like, hey, you know what? It's not my problem. I don't know. I don't own all the banks. It crystal knocked? Well, you know, uh, nobody needs that many glass windows. Uh, you know. So, that, so, like, the trees are like Switzerland and World War II? I'm on no one's side. No, no the, the trees the trees are quiet Germans that let it all happen. And then at the end, they're like, well, maybe V should, you know, push back against the sky. That's who they are. They're Germans that were like, oh, you know, he, oh, this, this, this Adolf guy is bad news, but, um, I mean, I already voted, and then the country put him in power, so what can I do, you know, I guess? I'll just sell some cheese. What's all this ash coming from by the train station? 
That's the trees. The trees are. You remember in Band and Brothers where they like they free a Nazi uh, a concentration camp and then they go into town and they're like screaming at the locals that are baking bread and making cheese and they're like, it's right next door to you. You can smell it. You know, and they're like, I'm just making some cheese. I'm sorry. You know, no, no, no. That's you. You're complicit. Like you knew what was going on. And, well, I mean, the trees didn't know what was going on, but they're like aware of it because Pippin and what's his face tell him. That's the trees. The trees are like, I feel like there's a lot of pent up anger towards these imaginary trees. Like they don't even choose a side. They're so stupid. They literally do choose a side though. Well, after it's too late. After it's too late. That's what true neutral is. True neutral is just a fat guy eating Cheetos out of his belly button playing a PlayStation game. True neutral is the lamest shit you could possibly be. It's having poison put in your corn and you're like, well, I haven't died yet and you keep eating the fucking corn. Good. I disagree, but it's fine. We can disagree. I mean, you can be wrong. Like That's fine. Trees. It's America. Everybody can be wrong. I like the trees. I thought the trees were cool. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm, you, I've am i got a mustache. I'm the Lorax. I speak for the trees. They're a bunch of bitches. They gave up. What? what oh, is it? It's not... What, why'd you go mustache so hard recently? Just for funsies? Is there a reason for this? My beard was just scratchy on my cheeks. And so I uh, I was like, I'm just going to shave it. I got I got drill this weekend anyway, so the beard would have had to go. And I was like, I was getting like itchy on the cheeks and like dry skin. So I was like, I'll just shave it off and start again. How many mutas? 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 Mutas. those are? Mutas. Muta. It's a four. It's a four muta, which means it's a really? full weekend of drill. That's insane to me. I'm going to take a PT test. I was in for six years. I never had a Muta 4. A Muta 4 is just a normal weekend. You have no, two Mutas per day. There's a Muta in the beginning and a Muta in the no, second I half. No, I understand what you're saying. I never had less than a 5. Ever. Oh, you had to show up like Friday night, spend the night? In six For six years, I never had Saturday, Sunday. That was it. Were you? What was your MOS? I was a combat medic. I don't you know. A, you I had never a, you, had a... You wouldn't... Wait, when did you come in? 2012. Well, they might have been... Uh, that's you, You're a shitty commander. That's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Bro, Why is a 68 horrible. whiskey staying Friday night to... What are they fucking... I, it was li like literally it was uh it was straight up just like I only had like three or four commanders and I think they were all just super fucking mad that they had to come in extra so all the 68 whiskeys were under HHC company mm -hmm. so it was literally like the chain like the top chain of command or whatever the medics the scout sniper platoon and like the comm guys that was HHC and I think just because the commander had to be there, he's like, fuck it, everybody's going to be here if I have to be here. That sounds about and right. That sounds like a horrible literally leader. Literally, like, just what happened for six years. That's it horrible. Sucked. It was so dumb. It was rad. And then we had two ATs every year, so that was also shitty. shit. You, you were literally in the worst unit ever. I wish you could say who they were and who your commander was. So that he knows that he's a fucking turd. Because that's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. It was pretty dope. It was a good time. It doesn't sound like it was a good time. It sounded like some idiot was in charge. And then just made people unhappy and uncomfortable. For no reason. Yeah, there's a reason I got out. <laughs> no shit. Yeah, if I was doing muta fives for every drill for no reason, just... A five was lucky, dude. It was almost always... Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and that was probably a couple times a year. And I would say six times a year, it was Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then AT, the shortest AT I ever had was three weeks. And then, because I was a medic, we had to do medic week on top of it. So somewhere in the year, we had to go in 
to they called it mystic which is like where we go to recertify on all our because yes. we have to maintain a civilian emt license mm -hmm. so we had to like do all the credit hours for that in a week so like I don't know. It was a sh it was a shit ton. It sounds like your commander was an idiot and doesn't know how to like lead troops or time management at all. It sounds like a brain dead idiot was in charge of you, like a guy who literally does not like the people below him, and so he intentionally punishes them because his wife won't touch his flaccid wiener, even though he can't get it up anymore. He probably needs to go see the VA for Viagra. Nothing wrong with that. Just saying. Stop being mad and just have somebody help you with your wiener work, bud. Can you say his name? Tell me his name. I don't even know his name, honestly. We, I had like three or four commanders, but it was kind of... And I don't know if it was just like one guy started the precedent and that's just fucking what happened. Oh, and some commander wasn't brave enough to be like, yeah, this is bullshit. And that's why no one will remember your name, Lieutenant Colonel, bitch. We had we had one we had one lieutenant that came in like the last year I was there that would always just let us go early and get in trouble for it and he was awesome. And he he's had the two one rules. worth fighting for. He had two rules. He told me on the first day he's like I got pretty chill. I just got two things. I don't like people sitting on the tables. And I was like, "All right, all right. That's all right. weird, but whatever. That's fine." Nobody's allowed to look at porn. And very reasonable <laughs> so yeah what was he mormon was... uh-huh was he mormon i have no idea no i don't think so oh th those are both rules i guess i can get behind at work don't sit at he the table so and don't look trouble. at porn when you're at work so we got, have you been to camp dodge you gotta go for 24 now what have you been to camp dodge oh a ton yeah what is camp dodge that's uh like the big National Guard installation in Iowa. It's in Des Moines. Amazing. So like Camp, yeah. Of course, I've been to Camp Dodge National Guard in Iowa. Oh, truck sent by goes. This is officially longer than any unsub episode. I mean, not if it's uncut. Not unless there's yeah, you guys have no idea how long those unsub episodes if actually it's an, are. If it's a non-edited version of unsub, no. No. And on that yeah. note, Nicholas, we're done. I've got to go to bed. I've got to go make somebody's day uncomfortable tomorrow morning. Yeah, you got to go speak for the trees early in the morning. And the trees say, cut me down because I'm so neutral. I don't give a shit when I die. Stupid trees. The trees in Lord of the Rings are pieces of shit, and everybody needs to know it. Good night. Goodbye. Are we off?